Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, today marks a very important day in my political career. Today marks one year since I became the parliamentary representative for Mikud North. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, please permit me to stray a little before I commence my contribution to this bill. I want to start by wishing the patrons of the St. Anne's Parish, Mr. Speaker, and that's my home parish, happy parish feast as they prepare to celebrate tonight. Mm -hmm. And I want to extend my condolences to the Shalry family who recently buried their loved one, Miss Lucille Shalry, better known as Miss La Belta. Today, Mr. Speaker, marks a year since the people of Mikudnov created history at the polls. And for the first time, they brought the seat home to the St. Lucia Labour Party. I want to sincerely thank the people of Praline, Mamiku, Monripo, Lahu, Lomba, Grass Street, Passius, Lapwet, St. Mary, Monboarden, Margaret Escap, Volet, Mayet, and the Mikud Village, Mr. Speaker, for placing their confidence in me and giving me the opportunity to represent them in this House of Parliament. I also want to thank those individuals, Mr. Speaker, in the diaspora who work tirelessly to ensure that I am where I am today. Mr. Speaker, permit me to mention some of these individuals quickly, who despite not residing in the constituency currently, they continue to play an integral role in the development of Mikud North. Jubilee, Daniel, Tobo, Bia, Frances, Adria, Marie, Celia, Gaston, Dennis, Furness, and all the others. And I will not be able to mention all of them, Mr. Speaker, and I ask that they forgive me. Those who I may not have remembered this morning, I ask that they forgive me. Thank you for buying into the mantra, Miku Se Sanu, and contributing towards the development of a Miku that you can proudly call yours. I have to also mention, Mr. Speaker, a few stalwarts in the community who work like donkeys during the campaign to ensure that we achieve this feat. My campaign manager, Ms. Phyllis, you, you, Cynthia, Laurelly, <coughs> Mayo, Laba, Silas, Mr. Rosary, Peterson, Ms. Befelid, <laughs> Felicia, Tasha, Risha, Mr. Cagney, Jacoda, Mr. M, Backyard, Mr. Henry, Beverly and Wilberfer, Nelva and Minelva, OG and Erlen, Red Rat, Ghana, Yanet, Chanel, my constituency branch, my office staff, my friends, and in a very special way, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank my prayer support group, the fishermen and the farmers, my family, and my mentor. To say that the past year has been a walk in the park, or it has been all glitter and glamour, Mr. Speaker, would certainly be an untruth. The last year has been a learning curve for me, and it has definitely come about with some of its challenges. It has not been the easiest year in which to govern. And as a country, Mr. Speaker, we are still trying to come to terms with the pandemic. We have seen the dark clouds of inflation covering our skies due to the Russia-Ukraine war. In my constituency, Mr. Speaker, I continue to grapple with the issues of sargassum and the high rates of youth unemployment. And as I say sargassum, Mr. Speaker, I want to I know that the fishermen are very concerned, but I can see today in this honorable house that as we speak, um, works are being done to take care of the sargassum situation in Mikud. And hopefully, as soon as we are done with Mikud, we are going to move to Praline to continue the works. <laughs> hopefully, then we have to. I'm also charged with the responsibility, Mr. Speaker, of managing expectations of individuals, especially those expectations which are not realistic and sometimes very individualistic. But as one who believes in the wood, I can tell you that God knew exactly what he was doing when he appointed the men and women of this government to handle the affairs of this country, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell my colleagues today, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let us continue to put St. Lucia and the affairs of St. Lucian's first. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to lend my voice in support of the amendments to the firearms bill. 
I will be the first to admit, Mr. Speaker, that we have a serious problem. A serious problem on our hands. And as a matter of fact, sometimes I even say that we are in a state of crisis. There is no running away from the harsh reality which we are faced with in this country. Although this alarming and disconcerting incidents and phenomenon of crime is not unique to only St. Lucia. We see similar situations in Jamaica, Trinidad. You turn on your televisions and your radios, Mr. Speaker, and you cannot help but be saddened by the news of another gun-related homicide. Mr. Speaker, dealing with this situation requires an urgent and desperate need for innovative, creative, pragmatic thinking and strategies and, amend and uh, the amendments to this bill is part of the strategy, Mr. Speaker. Allow me to quote the words of Dr. Velon John from his piece, A Certain Perception. We, the movers and shakers in this society, and on whatever level and in whatever sphere, have to be creative and proactive in the posture we assume in the containment of crime. And it is a posture that must be holistic, for it is only in so doing that we can bring about a celebrious revolution in thought, in perception, in attitude, and conduct of the members of society. There are some very important words in this quote, Mr. Speaker. We the movers and the shakers. And in this room, I see quite a few movers and shakers, Mr. Speaker. We as politicians have been charged with the responsibility of spearheading the, of spearheading of the moving and shaking. Then I look at the next few words in this quote, we have to be creative. We have to be proactive in the posture that we assume in the containment of crime. This is what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. We have acknowledged that there is a problem with crime and gun-related offenses. We have taken the bold decision to tackle the situation head-on as part of our crime-fighting strategy. And it is for this reason that we are in this honorable house today debating the proposed amendment. And I want to commend the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, for being able to stand here boldly. Others may cower in the face of adversity, but he was able to stand here boldly and said that it does not matter what it costs him or his government. But if it is for the interest and for the betterment of the people of St. Lucia, that he is going to take the decision. And I want to commend him for being able to stand here and being able to take that decision to bring these amendments before the House today. Now note well, Mr. Speaker, I said as part of the strategy. We understand all too well that legislation alone will not suffice or it will not solve the problem before us. We understand that crime fighting and dealing with gun-related offenses is a lot more complex and perplex than what actually meets the eye. That is why, Mr. Speaker, that is why that as part of our manifesto promise, we agreed to tackle crime in a holistic manner. We have started this process. We started tackling some of the deficiencies as it relates to the physical infrastructure component of dealing with crime. Mr. Speaker, you would recall, not too long ago, a fleet of vehicles were handed over to the police to help bolster the operations. The budget this year has an allocation for the reinstatement of a custody suite. There is also an allocation for divisional headquarters in Grosilly, and we returned the training vault for the police. Work is underway, Mr. Speaker to improve the conditions at the Borderly Correctional Facility. A few weeks ago, we witnessed promotions happening within the ranks and fires of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, and now the amendments to the firearm bill. Mr. Speaker, crime should never be politicized. It should never be. But there is no shying away from the efforts of this government, Mr. Speaker. We cannot shy away from the efforts of this government to put measures in place to bring peace and comfort to the St. Lucian people. The measures which I mentioned are essential to dealing with what we are faced with currently, Mr. Speaker. But we also understand that we have a responsibility to ensure that our children and our grandchildren do not inherit what we have to deal with today. The only way to do so is to work on the parenting and education aspects and to provide an enabling environment so that the generations to come can thrive. We need to build a resilient St. Lucia which is not so heavily affected by external factors. And I know some people may say that this is wishful thinking. But Mr. Speaker, I believe in our people. I believe in the ability of our people as St. Lucians. So I know that we can achieve whatever it is that we put our minds to. This is why, Mr. Speaker, the programs like Back on Track, among others, they provide us with some kind of social intervention. And these programs continue to be a priority for this government. We have proposed to broaden the primary school education 
to address critical thinking, conflict resolution, and emotional intelligence. And all of this, Mr. Speaker, is in an effort to utilize a multidimensional approach to dealing with gun violence and crime in general. Mr. Speaker, there is usually an inherent or acquired need to score political points when dealing with issues related to crime or to place blame on administrations before us. But this government refuses to, to adopt this posture. As we have all noticed, and some of us here, Mr. Speaker, we have even experienced the incidence of gun-related offenses, and we know that it is alarming. And what has exacerbated the alarming situation is the involvement of our youth in this scenario of vicious, mindless, and sometimes deadly activity. Mr. Speaker, more often than not, we hear of incidents of gun violence. Our young people are involved. Our young people are dying, and we cannot allow this to continue. Mr. Speaker, I'm a young man. And when I think about the way in which so many of our young men meet their demise, it <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm a young man. Yes, and I want the record to say that I am a young man, despite what the member for Denry North may think. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, when I think about the way in which so many of our young men, they meet their demise, it really aches, Mr. Speaker. It really hurts to see that so many young men and women, as we have seen recently, they fall victim to gun violence and crime. There are issues that we can point to which contribute to crime, Mr. Speaker. Unemployment, dysfunctional homes, genetic endowments, poverty. But none of these, Mr. Speaker, can justify a person taking a firearm and killing another. None of these. Mr. Speaker, the proposed stiffer penalties in this legislation is intended to discourage persons from obtaining illegal firearms. And in a similar fashion, Mr. Speaker, like the member for Chozel, I believe that it could have been a little stiffer. But we too have to also be considerate, Mr. Speaker when we're passing laws. We have seen a situation where individuals have been caught with illegal firearms, and in less than a week, Mr. Speaker, they have made bail, and they're back on the streets doing even more things. We have heard individuals saying that when they buy their illegal gun, they put their 10 and their $15,000 aside right away in the event that they are caught, arrested, convicted. And Mr. Speaker, we cannot allow this to continue. And that is what this piece of legislation or the amendments to this piece of legislation is trying to discourage. Where persons believe right now, Mr. Speaker, $15,000 have been made to look like $20. Like somebody can literally just put $15,000 on a side, hold their firearm and wait in the event police hold them, they know where their bill money is coming from or where the fine money is coming from. So I support this bill, Mr. Speaker, and I support the stricter penalties. I support the stricter the, the fines and confinements. However, as I said, Mr. Speaker, we need to look at this in a holistic manner. We need to be able to provide the police with the support, and I'm happy that the Prime Minister in his presentation, the member for Castries East, spoke about ensuring that we implement the swift justice system to deal with the backlog of cases, because I know that that is one of the problems that impedes our progress, Mr. Speaker as it relates to dealing with matters, fire matters. We have situations, fire matters. I too, Mr. Speaker, from my police days, I have matters which are, in the, which are still in the court for about seven or eight years. And it is sad that persons have to wait seven or eight years for their fate. And I think that if we have a swift justice system where these matters can be disposed of urgently and quickly, we will also see a decline in the amount of gun-related offenses. Or if we don't see a decline in the amount of gun-related offenses, we are certainly going to see an increase in the amount of convictions. So, Mr. Speaker, when it hit home, or when it hits home, especially in my constituency, I have to speak and I have to support the bill. A few weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, I was in my constituency and I had to prematurely end my constituency day to attend and visit a family who had a son who got shot in Praline. And before we used to say it was in Castries, then we said it's in Viewfort. But Mr. Speaker, crime affects every one of us in this room. And we've seen little pieces, or, or we've seen the, the effects of crime trickle down 
to every constituency in this country. And we have to also understand that gun violence affects every aspect of our economy. It affects tourism, which we are heavily dependent on, and we cannot allow this to continue. So I support the intention of this bill. I know that this bill, the intention is good. I'm hoping to see that we can actually make this thing work, Mr. Speaker, but it would, re it would need the efforts of every one of us. So in closing, Mr. Speaker, I would like to once again lend my voice in support of this bill, and I'd like to encourage all agencies in society to play their part in dealing with this multifarious phenomenon as it affects all of us. I want to reiterate my support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.